to school, to finish at times or support at times. Thank you. Three, three Jeff. The, the nitrogen um, oxide um, diffusion tubes that we use, um, it, it's a very blunt instrument because we only get a monthly average, but we then add together for a yearly average. And that's a national way of doing it. Um, so we can target our resources and get better equity spread as possible. Um, you would expect peaks at, at the traffic flow times in certain weather conditions. You might also expect peaks in certain um, roadworks where there's a lot of stationary <coughs> sort of we, um, We're unable, because of those diffusion tubes, we only have a month's worth of data to see if there's particular peaks. What the government guidance does tell us is if, if it's reaching 60 micrograms, the, and the, the national average level is 40, then we should start looking more closely because you might have individual peaks at a half level. And we don't have that um, on any of the monitoring stations at the moment. Um, the real time um, levels are, are recorded by um, the DEFRA stations I mentioned, and those are published on, on, on the internet. And down, but there's no um, for these monitoring points that we have. Um, we'll move on to the next slide. This is the chart I mentioned. Um, apologies, it's not in a map format, but what you have is you have a list of the, um, I'm sure that this will be available in the moment afterwards, this is a list of the streets where we have monitoring um, station uh, points. Um, the red line at the top is the national air quality standard um, from 2005. Um, so you can see uh, the places that I mentioned in and around Singleton Avenue um, are the highest ones. Um, the uh, Wallasey Road in this card, that's at the taxi rank, exceeds um, that level, which we should explain. Um, I think the best thing I can do is to perhaps need members to have a look through that um, when these slides are, are distributed. Maybe that's something in a session. So, um, across the city region then, there are 11 declared air quality management areas. Um, these are in, this is not in, I'm afraid that's an area, it's St Helens, Sefton, Liverpool and Holton. Um, the Metro Mayor has included an action within his 100 day plan to investigate options uh, for improving air quality. Um, you'll probably be aware that the Liverpool City Council Mayor has made a commitment to make the entire city a clean air zone and, and restrict diesel cars entering it. Um, the Liverpool City Region authorities are working in partnership with, um, with Mersey Travel um, to develop. Um, a, an air quality prioritisation study, and this is really going out to consultation to get more information on where our problems are likely to be and what, option, what are our best options for tackling um, those. At the moment, within the region, our problems um, aren't as severe as some of our neighbours. Um, Can I just say, Ken, just as a point of information for the rest of the committee? The Liverpool City Region Scrutiny Committee, one of our first pieces of scrutiny is going to be air quality control. Air quality management. Um, quickly, the, um, the government's plan to improve air quality again focuses on the nitrogen oxides, the, which are associated with cars. Um, they launched it in 2017, July 2017. There's been several launches that have been subject to action in the High Court. Um, the, the plan focuses on tackling the most polluted locations, uh, and they've listed six cities where they are saying, as a short term, um, immediate intervention, they need to impose a clean air zone, and they've given those cities about 18 months to look at that. What about the Birmingham one? They say that's real spaghetti. Or are we talking about the whole city? Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming it's the city centre. Most of these will be city centre focused. Could I ask? The government have designated those six cities. Have they given those six cities any money to try and tackle this? Any extra money? Any funding? Thank you. 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 Thank you
the future. Um, there is the government, as part of its plan, has provided funding for um, for certain um, air quality work for councils uh, in several uh, parts. Some relating to electric vehicles, some to to, to other things, uh, and some to clean to clean air zones. I'm not sure of the exact details. Uh, it's quite a lengthy document, um, but yeah, um, I think they are like use. Um, the most polluting vehicles um, in these clean air zones will be will have access restricted. Um, again, this is a short-term fix. What the government is saying is we are stuck with this problem because um, technology that we relied on for our car manufacturers to cause emissions hasn't really necessarily worked out, um, which is creating some of these problems. We've seen some figures on the growth in diesel cars as well, which in some cases give out eight or nine times more particulate matter or nitrogen oxides in petrol cars. So that's how they say we the why for this particular problem. The plan that they put forward maintains that it's, uh, there are local issues that we, the local authorities are the best place to deal with it. Um, however, they uh, recognise the plan that they need to um, provide leadership as well, um, particularly with bans on cars and that kind of action. Um, Government has announced financial support through a 255 million implementation fund for local authorities um, to be into to prepare for the target action. No, I like to specify within the plan and things like removing speed bumps, that's, that's specified improving traffic junctions, sort of exactly yeah, you mentioned earlier. You can do that. <laughs> Are we as a council accessing, and that was a genuine question, I wasn't being part of this little uh, I wanted to know whether the government was putting funding in. Are we as a council, can this committee be reassured that as we as a council are doing our utmost to get as much of that 255 million as we possibly can? That's yes, yes. I think the question is statistics about the region of these clear, clear um, air zones. They're going to be further on, and they're going to be they're going to be further ahead of the more companion case. It's not that we have a lot of companion case, but there, there's all this to be further on. But we're trying to get that funding money. Yeah. yeah. So, there's a travel we'll have and we'll need to be a bit there before we start paying for so, Can I ask, you know, when you talk about taking away speed bumps and stuff to, to make the cars go faster? I know. No, I'm not talking about just highlighting the, the, is, the issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, is there really any looking into road safety in this kind of thing? Oh, well, I said, because I've been trying to get it for the plan, it's specified that the sort of things you might apply for yeah. to do with this money is to, is to remove traffic safety schemes and improve junctions. That, that was in the plan. So that's the sort of thing that you're supposed to as well. There, there is, um, we do work closely with our in our transportation. It's, it's obviously important that we don't compromise road safety at the same time as promoting air, air quality. Um, sometimes there is a synergy, so for example, steady, low speed driving is good for air quality, so some of the traffic safety measures aren't necessarily all bad for air quality. Um, the, the example we're all aware of is kind of speeding up in between and slowing down in between speed bumps, which is bad. Um, some councils are looking at, um, you know, she came to my better, but encouraging um, safe driving, so, but that's, that's, that's an ongoing discussion. Um, so, over the last five years, levels of nitrogen dioxide have fallen across the world. Uh, we don't have any airport management in the areas. However, we do have a number of policies um, across the council in, in, in many teams that do um, impact on air quality. Um, so, for example, just quickly, because I don't have detailed knowledge of all of these, but um, we adopted the City Regions Transport for Growth Plan, uh, and that looks at um, promoting effective and sustainable. Uh, transport networks, it's no good asking people to get out of cars if there's no buses to catch or trains. Um, we've established an electric vehicle strategy to try and speed up the uptake of electric vehicles um, and the infrastructure associated with it. Um, we've got a long standing commitment to uh, climate local and we established a cool rural climate change strategy. Um, this strategy focuses on reducing climate pollution. Um, Go Cycle has offered at 12 of our railway stations, uh, which is offered to passengers 
and alternative mode of transport for a longer journey. Can I just add on the ongoing cycle from, um, if I understood it right last night at the um, integrated um, transport meeting, you have to return your cycle to the station you got it from because of theft. And therefore, they're not really used very much, um, and it's not really a thing that would aid um, anti pollution because you've got to use your car to get there, possibly to pick up the bike to get it because you've got to get it back. So, it's, it, I don't think that's a very useful example. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll feed those comments back to colleagues in the. Can I ask another question? Do you remember, do we still have different levels of car tax, I don't have a car, of car tax um, for different cars? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, so diesel and everybody got it very cheap. It's not the other way around. No, 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 no. Is it the other way around now? Well, that's lovely. I'm not pleased about that. No, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, during 2016, an extra, an additional three kilometres of cycle paths were provided. Um, Taxi licensing, um, the older vehicles, both hackney carriages and private hire, um, are subject to an additional MOT um, with an emissions test, so that's every six months rather than a year. Um, in partnership with Mersey Travel, uh, we've improved the network of bus and rail based park and ride schemes, um, and 12 of the borough's train stations now offer a park and ride facility. Um, and within environmental health, we, we um, we issue and monitor 56 permits for industrial processes um, to make sure they are meeting <coughs> prescribed emission levels um, and other behaving responsibly. Um, I think we'll hand over to Mike now, we'll just take the next uh, next time. Okay. Last slide there, everyone. Um, so, you've heard the position on the river. It, yeah, it's, uh, we haven't got issues compared to our regional colleagues or national colleagues even. Uh, best, you know, just, just, just geographically, being a peninsula, etc., means we just haven't got the sort of issues that inner city Liverpool or, or, or Southern have got. But nonetheless, we have issues. Um, and we also have issues in the future that we need to make sure uh, don't adversely affect uh, air quality management. So, um, everything to do, you know, there are key things within the world plan about how many houses we have to build or how much investment we're going to go into small and medium uh, enterprises or uh, even investment in sector tourism. These issues can affect our uh, delicate balance in terms of air quality moving forward. So we're preparing a strategic review of air quality in depth about what we're doing. And something going back to Council of Hospital's issue about the, you know, the, the fledgling um, train um, bike system, which you know, has got issues. But nonetheless, they're, 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 they're aligned with alternative um, modes of transport, etc. And they can be improved. So the, uh, the, the, the the transport scheme obviously is, is something that is moving forward and it is, it's long term. The, the, the thing that's very much fledged is obviously uh, e-vehicles e and um, charging for vehicles. So if we can get things into planning about making sure that there are connections built into new houses or new estates or new developments, that's the sort of thing that we want to move forward on in the future. So what, what I was making the board council was is that yes, it's, 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 it's not going to be fault, but nonetheless it's there to use. And people are using it as well, so I understand. So, if you can only use it to go back to where you got it from? Well, that's a train, isn't it? So, you go yeah. to the train to the journey. Yeah. So, if you, if you call the train to West Curve, you go for the ride and come back. I think that's how people call it West Curve. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's not working. Okay. Well, you know, if, if, if it's working in other cities like London, you can, you can dock that by some hours. We need to pass that on, we need to pass that on. Apparently, we started letting you drop them off along the route, but you can't do that because people stole them. That's what we were told last night. But the major hub is Hooton anyway, which is outside the front. Great challenge to pick them up. But if you get them up West Kirby, you put them back at West Kirby. So anything you do by way of ride would only be halfway and back when you go to. And that was a major problem brought up yesterday. Okay, we'll, we'll feed that back, as, as, as Ken said. In terms of Metro Mayor, obviously it's 30 days for him. He's developing his complicated plan. Part of it is an action on air quality, and we'll work with that, and we'll work with him on a bit more time assessment. Um, the uh, Public Health are updating their joint strategic needs assessment uh, for rural air quality. That's going to be ready uh, this, this calendar year.
here. Um, modeling on, on those um, contributed deaths needs to be taken with some qualification. We can give more detail about that, I'm sure, Ken, about how that works. Um, certainly, really, really, obviously, any, any, debt, any implication in there is obviously not something we, you know, something we want to, we want to um, attack and, 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 uh, and uh, address. But we are certainly lower regionally and nationally in, in, in those things. Um, and something else we're, we're considering um, is um, enforcing against uh, vehicles idling um, and exploring the powers we've got under the uh, road traffic vehicle emissions regulations um, uh, uh, piece of legislation to do that. So uh, in fact we're, 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 we're considering how that would be, would be developed into our enforcement contracts. Um, but obviously there's also a, a, a big public um, uh, awareness campaign that needs to be involved in terms of how to uh, drive cars more in it, etc. Okay, that's the presentation chair. Um, if you have a very good question for the next one. Okay, thank you chair. When I raised my hand to speak, it was mainly around um, growth and tourism, um, housing and business, which is all part of our strategy as a council. Uh, so this slide has covered most of, of my questions. But one thing that I'm actually um, not sure about, because I don't know much about the subject, is I saw that in, within my own ward that uh, there was one of the areas was shown as 32 and the level was 40. What does it take to get from 32 to 40? I, I don't understand how to, you know, the, the 40 would take and anyone leave that off on? If it's the average, it must be the observer for it. Thank you for the review, Chair. There isn't an easy answer um, to what it would take to get from 32 to 40. Um, there's, uh, well, um, there, is, um, there is no clear, you know, if it would take so many numbers of cars or, or anything like that. Um, all we can say is we, we would keep an eye on the figures and if it was approaching 40, we would need to, need to intervene. On top of all the measures that we're already taking to try and lower um, the levels of air pollution um, to, to, to as low a level as, as, as we can um, and possibly uh, already. So I haven't got a clear answer for you. What would it take um, to go from 32 to 40? Um, obviously, the closer to 40 it becomes, the more concerned that we become. Well, if you want more information on where those monitoring points are, perhaps, and, and, and the sort of traffic, uh, I'm, I'm sure if you, I'm happy to give you that information if, if that would help. Thanks, Kenny. If I could just come back on that chair. What gives me a bit of concern there is obviously um, I'm a member of the uh, chair of the planning committee. If I can't get that information before we look at planning applications, then that gives me concerns that I've got to look at it retrospectively. And if we've built 180 houses within an area, we can't pull them down again. Thank you for the future. One of the, um, one of the important reasons that we are monitoring is if we have developments where we feel that it might have a significant impact on air quality, we will normally ask for an air quality impact assessment. They will use the figures in the um, annual report, to, uh, partly and also from the, um, the DEFRA stations to base their reports on, and then we will look at that. Um, now one of the things we ask ourselves when we review uh, where we are doing that monitoring is are we monitoring in enough areas to make sure that we, the developers and ourselves, can have the, the right level of information um, on air quality data so we can make informed decisions um, and, and challenge people if they are putting things in the wrong place or not putting um, measures in place to reduce air quality. So it's a very valid question. It's something that we're spending more time looking at and, and the air quality group. We're only discussing this so today, so it's right to be concerned, but that's, that's one of the reasons why we carry out monitoring so that our data is available. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I wanted to apologise. I'm going to ask a question about what you wrote in the last hour. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to gain a sense of how you 
to actually reach the conclusion that uh, an area isn't uh, a you know, relevant exposure. So, Walsey Road is the only, the only location which has exceeded the national figure. Um, and, yeah, we class that there was no relevant exposure there. How, how is a decision like that reached when it, when it does go over the threshold? And when when a, an area is classed as having an element exposure, what, what can you do? Thank you, and uh, three for your chair. Um, in looking at what the relevant exposure um, is, we have to go to the death row guidance. Um, that talks about facades and residential properties, um, schools, um, hospitals, even the facades of normal businesses and people run backwards and forwards. It doesn't ask us to um, consider that as relevant exposure. So that 40, that level of 40 that I was talking about, that is aimed at um, residential um, property or where people are there for substantial part of the day. So that's that's the technical guidance that we, that we go from. And that's the discussion that we, that we have with them. We can seriously think about that, we're not trying to push anything out of the way. Um, the, why then did we put the monitoring there if we knew there's not relevant exposure? Well, it was because we had complaints about idling and I wanted to find out what effect that has on the air quality um, for people in that area, taxi drivers, for members of the public. We've got a better idea now, um, and as a result of that, we're trying to adopt anti idling legislation. <coughs> Our colleagues in licensing have written to taxi drivers, um, highlighting the and, um, and as I said, we're also looking at how we can engage with people. I think you know, we, we, we haven't always been very public about air quality and, and, and had this, this open debate. So that's what, as a result of that monitoring, that's what we're intending on doing. Um, we will continue monitoring at that point to see if there's an improvement. Um, so I don't know if that, if that answers your question or part of the issue with you. Can I come back to you? I know, uh, I know the location fairly well, and I think you know, I think takes place you know, throughout the day and the evening and, and into the night. Uh, and there is quite a high concentration of people there in both, both the day and, and, and the night. And I'm just kind of wondering. How do you measure that? How do you measure um, whether you know, a certain location is actually um, when, it, when it exceeds the, the national figure? Whether that the exposure to those to those people is is, is dangerous in any way? Um, and you, know, you said that it, it's dependent on. The amount of people there. But what's the kind of figure there? Is what's the kind of figure in terms of what what is classed as busy? Uh, Thank you. Uh, through for you, chair. The the decision on whether it is relevant exposure legally, we have to follow the death guidance, and that talks about the facades of residential property because they, they have to define it some way, schools or, or hospitals. Um, where, where we don't have a situation like that, we are looking at the figures to see, well, um, is there likely to be um, a dangerous level, you know, a one hour level that is, um, talking about a dangerous level there and then it's specified as 200 micrograms. Okay. Okay. So it's set well, but I mean the, the national figure is, is a very safe bet anyway. And the, am I right in saying that you know the congregations of people isn't within the guidelines? It's not within those guidelines. But as a council, we would be concerned if that um, if that annual level was um, the level is forty. If it raised to a sixty then what the guidance says is you, you might occasionally be getting hourly levels at 200 which would be dangerous and need further. Um, what we're trying 
tried to do is have a proportionate response to that problem of OCI. We went to look for that problem because we were having reports, and we're concerned about other high blink problems, possibly as taxi ranks. So that's why we wanted to find out more about it. As a result of that, we put some actions in place. We're still at the beginning of that journey. Um, if it was 200, then, then, then I'd be far more concerned. Um, as I said, these old-fashioned, if you like, diffusion tubes, they can't give us an hourly rate, so we would have to do more on-the-spot investigations to reassure ourselves or see that there was a problem and do more about it. Um, don't know, does that answer the question? Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you, Chair. 
Chair. Um, I've got two questions really. Uh, the first one was to uh, follow from Councillor Leach's questions. And um, this is, you, you talked about 32 and then the level 40. I'm not joking about a few minutes. Uh, I was just wondering what the speed of the fluctuation between those figures could be. So if it's an average, and you quickly to 40 and back down to 32, technically on an average, you could be well below the board. Really a lot of spikes up against 40. So I wondered what the speed was that it changes between the numbers. Does it take on 